Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to make regularization in machine learning very very simple for you. Okay. So every time you search for L1, L2 regularization and these topics, right, there will be a lot of mathematics. In this video, my objective is to make it very simple so that you can explain to interviewer in the most simplest way possible. We will see why regularization is needed first question okay second question what are the different ways of regularization so when we talk of regression models when we talk of decision trees when we talk of deep learning what are the different ways in which regularization is done and third thing is we will go little deep into l1 and l2 regularization also known as ridge and lasso regularization let's start one by one guys so first thing i want you to refresh is this line guys okay this line is nothing but the whole struggle of a data science project okay so this line tells you that every time you have a data and you fit a machine learning model on that you are trying to find this sweet spot now what is this sweet spot guys if your data is not proper or the model you are fitting is not suitable for that data then your model will not learn that phenomena is called underfitting okay underfitting means your model is not learning enough on the other hand if the data and model combination is not good and due to other reasons as well model overfits what is the uh, what is the practical implication of model overfitting model will kind of hug the data it will remember the data and model is not flexible enough here model is not learning enough and here model is not flexible enough so what we have to find is a balance between these two okay and that balance point is i have written here the sweet spot for all the data the sweet spot might vary now i had created a video on bias variance trade-off and that is what i explained just now these kind of models have high bias these kind of models have high variance and what we try to balance bias and variance you can see the link here you can watch the detailed video as well now what type of model will have high bias and what type of model will have high variance so let me write here bias is high and here variance of the model is high so if we talk of regression based models right in regression based models model assumes the form of the data it assumes there is a linear relation between independent and target so there is a bias there is a parametric model hence these kind of models have high bias you typically see that regression models will not give you very good accuracy on trend data also on new test data also okay what kind of models will have high variance the model which is free to do whatever it want to do understand guys this very clearly there are few models which is free to do whatever it wants to do for example decision trees for example your plain neural networks all these models un until or unless you don't do some regularization some parameter tuning some pruning all these models are free model they don't assume any form of the data these kind of model typically if you don't control the parameters typically it will tend to give high variance okay now let's talk about few models in particular and try to understand how do we regularize that model to reiterate again to find this sweet spot we need to regularize the model okay to regularize the model there are different ways okay the why part we discussed next question comes what are the different ways in which regularize we always hear about l1 l2 are there other ways so guys l1 l2 is applicable to regression models only if you talk of decision tree models right then you would have heard of bagging and boosting techniques those are nothing but regularization techniques okay what we try to do when we fit a random forest what we try to do when we fit a ada boost we try to reduce the variance of plain decision tree model right if you go to deep learning models right you would have heard of something known as dropout layer what is the use of dropout layer guys 
dropout layer is nothing but a method to regularize the deep learning model or a method to prevent overfitting of the deep learning model now we will go in little detail about l1 and l2 technique okay so guys here i have drawn two images okay left hand side chart is about your underfitting of a model so all these dots are your training data and cross is your test data suppose we are fitting a linear regression model okay cross is your test data all the dots are your train data cross is your test data so what is happening in this one is model is kind of not fitting properly to the data just see the dots now because dots is the training data okay so one dot two dot three dot so model is this one simple line like this okay this model may not be fitting on the train data as good as this is fitting if you see one two three dots right so it is going like this kind of hugging the train data kind of remembering the train data the problem with this model is it will not give very good training accuracy and test accuracy also probably it is not fitting to the data very well the problem with this model is though it is fitting to the training it is not going to do any good on the test data so suppose i want to predict on this data if you see these distances will be too high okay these distances will be high which means model accuracy will be low on the test data on the other hand these distances will be low which means model accuracy will not be that that bad so this is underfitting this is overfitting what we try to do here in regularization is we try to find a midway i was showing you the showing you the sweet spot right can i have a curve something like this which is not very complex and it does the job can i have a curve like this for that since this is a regression based model so it's all about mathematical equations and it's all about coefficients now imagine if it's a tree based model we don't talk about coefficients i already explained we talk about bagging boosting and sampling those kind of things if it's a layers in deep learning model we talk about layers like dropout layer here it's all about coefficients so we control coefficients so how do we do that there are two ways to do that one is known as l2 regularization and also known as ridge regression r i d g e okay here what we do is we redefine the loss function now loss function and cost function i have explained in detail the link is here guys you can watch to keep it high level loss function is nothing but the function which is optimized to gain the coefficients values what is that function typically typically that function is y minus y hat y is actual value y hat is predicted value whole square residual sum of squares nothing else okay this function will be tried to minimized where from y hat will come y hat is nothing but beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 correct where beta 1 is your coefficient beta 1 is your slope right so in l2 ridge regression this cost function i am writing the cost function here the cost function will have an additional term that term is known as lambda into slope square what is this slope this slope is nothing but the coefficients so if you think this y hat as beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 for first observation then this slope will be this beta 1 what will happen due to this guys what will happen due to this what happens if this line is very steep very steep means like this what will happen in this case in this case for a small change in x also y will increase by a bigger margin if it's a steep curve if it's a flatter curve for a small unit shift in x y will not shift by that much so it's all game of this coefficients now it depends on us how much this value of coefficient we want and that is what we regularize to find that sweet spot this coefficient will only you know make your model underfit or overfit right i was talking about this dotted curve we want to have this dotted curve kind of thing which will give me a sweet spot how you will have that sweet spot you need to have the right coefficient 
what is the right coefficient the coefficient which is not too high and not too low based on your data how do we know what is high and what is low for my data i know by looking how y is responding to different axes right so as i told this is a steep curve more shift in y with small shift in x this is a flat curve more shift less shift in y with less shift in x okay so what will happen when we use this l2 ridge regression is the optimal value of your loss function the optimal value of your loss function will be derived based on proper coefficient value so what will happen is if your coefficient goes beyond a limit then this term will shoot up see this term guys if your slope is high then this term will go up if this term goes up then your cost function value will go up which is not what model wants to do model wants to keep the cost low okay or the loss low so this term has to be low this term cannot be high and lambda is a fixed number guys you can pass in the sql learn when you call this model let's start with 0.01 or something like that so lambda you can pass it like lambda is a parameter you can tune like you tune in gradient boost and all okay but this slope is the important thing here this entire term has to be low then only your cost function value will be low and to keep this entire function as low entire thing entire this whatever is in this box to keep this term as low your coefficient should be tuned in such a way that you know this entire thing value becomes low for that to happen your coefficient cannot go beyond a limit understand this guys your coefficient will not go beyond a limit because if it goes the value of loss will start shooting up hence we call this method as shrinkage coefficient shrinkage it will not allow your coefficient to go beyond a limit and that is what l2 regression or ridge regression does this is a regularization of your coefficients why were we are regularizing coefficients because it's a regression model if it's a neural network model we will do something else it's a regression model hence coefficient regularization right how to regularize the coefficient add an additional term in the loss function lambda of coefficient square and it will be automatically taken care okay this is about your loss function of ridge regression and one minor difference if you compare with lasso regression is your cost function remains same this will obviously repeat for all the observations guys i hope you are getting it plus lambda into modulus of slope modulus of slope means some slope can be positive some slope can be negative some beta values can be positive some beta values can be negative so so that it, it does not cancel out each other we take a modulus if there are more betas we add here okay beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 multiply that by lambda lambda is again a hyperparameter that we need to tune based on our data the purpose remains the same here also we are shrinking the coefficients we are shrinking the coefficients okay by how much that depends on how our data is where our optimal lambda is and where our optimal value of the coefficient is but the purpose of this entire exercise is to regularize the model so that we find that sweet spot okay and there are slight differences between l1 and l2 regularization which I am going to cover in next video because this is getting little longer now. I will just summarize what all we discussed so that it remains in your mind. Regularization, a process to find the optimal point in the model. Optimal point means sweet spot, bias variance, balance. Different types depend on the model. If it's a regression, L1, L2. If it's a decision tree, bagging, boosting, stacking. If it is a neural network, dropout and these things. L1, L2 regularization, what we do? We tune the cost function of simple linear regression and we add another penalty term. Why we add this term? We add this term because we want to have a shrinkage. We, we, we do not want the coefficient to go beyond a limit so that it is difficult to control. We do not want a very steep curve. Okay. One more thing I want to add here. You always normalize or you always standardize your data before using lasso or ridge. Otherwise, you will not see very good results. So let me know in comments guys you understood this concept or you have any questions in my next video i'll cover the differences between this and i'll also cover about why 
one of these makes coefficient sum coefficient as zero and why one of these do not make sum coefficient as zero why one of these is used as a feature selection why not the other one i am also going to show you how to do this in python but first let's get very clear with the theoretical aspects okay if you have any questions write me in comment guys give me a thumbs up if you like this video i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care